I am so excited to introduce our next guest. I'm sure if you're like most of us, we're so excited to get out of the house and cross your fingers, start traveling again. And Deneen Dustin, a corporate travel expert, is here to talk to us about all the hot spots and where we should consider planning our next big event. So Deneen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, we're so excited as well. I mean, it's been a rough year and a half for everyone, hasn't it? Oh, definitely. On so many levels. What have you seen like in the past during COVID? Did everything pretty much just dry up or were there certain things that still kept going on throughout? I'll tell you, when everything really hit hard here in the U.S., it was mid-March of 2020, and I was actually in Boston at a travel industry meeting, and several people there were from Europe. They had to immediately leave, or they would have been held out of their own respective countries. We felt like the world was just crumbling. Um, It was just falling apart for those of us in the travel industry, and I still remember on my flight home watching the news the entire time, and there was a doctor on there saying, or an expert of some kind, I think this is going to be about a two-year thing, and I'm going, no. Yeah. Yeah. This can't be happening. And so sure enough, as things kind of started unraveling, um, we had to work with our clientele in changing, you know, dates and moving them into this year, next year. Some canceled altogether, but for the most part, they were willing, they really wanted still to have their trips happen and their events. So they changed dates. Mm-hmm. We're still dealing with that right now, though. I mean, it's, yeah. it's not over yet. No, it's not over yet. And it's, I, I remember, you know, we had this, we had a hotel booked for this gigantic trade show in San Francisco. And we were investing like probably a million and a half in it. And all of a sudden it's no longer, and you have to just see what you can start. Luckily, thankfully the hotel was absolutely fantastic to work with. And so we just said, Hey, you know, this isn't happening. We're going to need to reschedule, you know, but it, it was pretty crazy to watch everything. Just, you know, that whole industry just really take a beating. So a lot of relationships were made and broken over how people responded to the situation. True. So the point. whole idea now is everybody wants to go back to the places that treated them right. That's so true, Lauren. That's and that's so- what, you know, I've kind of heard. We're a third party. So we work, as, as Lauren said, with corporations, um, different organizations that do things like President's Club. Maybe that's kind of a, a catchphrase people have heard. And right. in creating and delivering those kinds of trips for, for their high achievers within their companies. And it was imperative that we do, that we were that liaison, that, that um intermediary between the client and the tour operator, the airlines, the hotels and resorts, the convention centers, and doing everything in our power to be as fair as we could. And it was hard because there was one trip in particular that two, they kept saying they'd change dates, but in the end they canceled altogether. And I'm hundred percent commission. And so I'd worked on some of those for a year to a year and a half. I didn't get a dime. Yeah. That is so, so sad. Uh, I, hope, I hope they realize, you know, that we really, but, you know, force majeure, I'm sure you, you've heard that phrase. It's an act of God. It was out of all of our control. The pandemic, no one could tr- control that. And there were places literally completely shut down. There were airlines that didn't fly to certain places. So we had no choice but to do what the client wanted. And um, sometimes it wasn't to our benefit at all, but again, you have to be fair and, and do the right thing. Right. Well, we're so glad that you guys were, you know, the best of the best. And now I'm sure everyone wants to work with you because yes. of how you treated everyone. So now that you're seeing things coming back, where are the best spots? Where are, you know, as an event planner myself, what can I, what kind of like corporate events can I do that are just like ridiculously awesome over the top? Well, honestly, it's changing pretty much every day as far as what's opening up and everything we've been selling. So there are 11 salespeople here at Morris meetings and incentives where I work and um, lots of Mexico, Mexico. I've gone there three times since October, three Mm -hmm. or four times. And they have so many great protocols in place and the, the, 
you know, the spacing that they have and things like that, all of the social distancing, um, the mask wearing, um, it's, it's just been a really excellent place. That's kind of what we've been promoting. Mm, okay. Still really good rates and things like that. But Europe's really starting to open. And in fact, I had a meeting this morning with a group of people that do something like I do um, throughout the, well, there are a few from Europe on the call and um, things are really picking up and they're saying they're seeing a lot of traction now the, um, for the end of this year, the end of 2021. Oh, that's good. And 2022, I have a client right now, um, we're um, going, we were supposed to go to Greece this September, but they just felt like it was still kind of on the border of, mm. of, of being a good idea, I guess. So we're just changing that to May of next year, which is a prime time to be in Greece in Santorini. Oh, in absolutely. You so know, really, you I would say just a lot of things are opening. Almost anything you want to do or, or see um, probably in 2022. What do, you, what do you think are some of the, um, it's good to know about Mexico and in terms of like what's, what's safe and um, just from the travel advisory and then also areas where COVID is, is not a huge issue, uh, where are some good spots besides Mexico? Would you Honestly, I just got back from Hawaii on Saturday. I was there in Maui and also visiting um, in the island of Oahu. Mm -hmm. I saw 16 hotels in five days. So I feel like I know wow. a lot about where they, they are located and just yes, interior, do. exterior and food offerings and things like that. I would say Hawaii I am so in love with that place. And I know a lot of people say, well, that would go without saying, right? But I've always had kind of in my head, well, it's still part of the United States. It's not maybe as, as ex exotic as going international. But my goodness, it's it's safe. Mm -hmm. um, it's gorgeous. And you can get the really, you know, um, busy kind of feel, uh, very, um, you know, go to Waikiki and it's, it's hopping with people and yeah. such an energy that is not for everyone, but a lot of people want that in the high-end shops. Yeah. Go to Maui, it's, you know, a lot quieter. Go to Kauai and it's very, very laid back and even quieter than Maui. Really something for everyone, the different price points, you know, the different hotels, there's so many different styles of hotels and again, different price points. So I would say that's really top of my list. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes we do discount our own, well, so they're, yeah, in our country, right? But within the mainland, so many great places to go. I mean, Florida's always, can't really go wrong. There's so many places I'm learning more and more about Florida, aside yeah. from, you know, your traditional Orlando and Miami, um, South Carolina. Yeah. Places like that, San Diego, you can never go wrong with San Diego, right? That's true. San, well, that's true because I live about an hour north of San Diego. You are very lucky. And, <laughs> yes, and our viewership does as well. So we, as long oh, as you don't go on a Friday afternoon. Of all it's, of you, that's where I could, would live if I could afford it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, you know, right, Lauren, as long as we don't try to go down Friday afternoon, we're good. Yeah, you just but want to find a travel. parking lot. <laughs> but Denise lives in Utah. Amy knows quite a bit about Utah. And I know that there are plenty of fabulous locations and a brand new spanking airport. Oh. Could really no airport. Airport. It's going to celebrate its first year anniversary come September. And yeah. they're getting ready to build the second terminal. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's just sensational but yes you just reminded me lauren of utah um, <laughs> i have just been discovering my own backyard that was one of my covid blessings actually and that is southern utah because salt lake is in northern utah but we've got southern utah with zions rice um canyon lands i mean the list goes on and on and my favorite oh, is, lab is great. escalante is amazing I, uh, the slot canyons. have you done slot canyons? Yes. They are so beautiful. Yes. Okay. So mysterious. Our York, mysterious. <laughs> St. George, Utah is from, from us in orange County. St. George, Utah is about a six and a half hour drive. Yeah. It is not hard to get to. You can get to it in one day. If you want to take it easy, stop in Vegas and, you know, there you go. Enjoy Vegas. That's a four hour drive and then another hour and a half. So I guess five and a half hour drive. And it's just a, it's a wonderful place to be. Oh, it is. It's there. so magical. So mm -hmm. magical. 
So Amy, okay. wherever you create your next corporate event, I think we should plan on shooting the show there and then I could tag along. Let's please do that. Let's please do that. And obviously we're Janine, we're going to end up uh, using you for our travel booking, of, of course. course, because <laughs> you know all the good places all. to go. That's great. Well, thank you again so much for your insights and your perspective on being part of that industry. I know it's been really, really hard on everyone in your industry. And I'm so grateful for people like you who weather the storm and who have come out positive and just want to serve and do fun things together. And we're all going to be so grateful and very blessed for your, all of your efforts. So oh, thank oh, you very nice. nice traveling. Yes, definitely. Deneen, what is the coolest trip that you've ever been on? Oh, that's a hard one because I've done some really cool things and um, thanks to partners that invite me, hotels, tour operators, uh, CVBs, things like that. But most recently, I had the opportunity to actually travel to Rwanda. It's a little wow. small country in Africa. Mm -hmm. And what I got to do there is go trekking to find the mountain gorillas. What? A volcano. And so we actually had to go straight up these path. Well, there were no paths most of the time, <clears throat> excuse me, our uh, guide would have us wait for a few minutes and he would cut down the, the brush to make a, a trail for us. And then they have trackers that are with the gorillas, not quite 24 seven, but almost. So they know where they are to protect them from poaching. Oh my God. So they, they take us there. And it was so emotional, honestly, when we got to, we'd been trekking for about an hour through the mud and the rain and in the mist, oh. <laughs> like out of the movies, like gorillas in the mist. Yes. <laughs> and he said, Deneen, I want you to come up and be the first one to see the gorillas. Cause I was further down the line. I said, really? He said, they're here. Oh, that's amazing. Hey, um, I went around the corner and I, I still get emotional talking about, it. I saw these mounds of black fur and they were all still asleep. It was only eight 30 in the morning. Oh. I'm like, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> that is just amazing. What an unbelievable opportunity to have something like that. Priceless. Just so priceless. Would that be, would that be something a corporation would actually create that kind of an event? Really? That's what I do. That's why I go on so many of these trips. Honestly, why I'm invited is, uh, again, this was a tour operator that invited me. They're the, the people on the ground. They're the people that live there, the locals that would do your, um, you know, ground transportation, excursions, dinners, figuring out the best hotels and resorts and all of that, gifting even. Wow. So they invited me. So I got to have all this amazing food and gifts. And these excursions, um, the two gorilla treks, we did a chimpanzee trek. Um, and so that, those are the kinds of partners that we, they, we work with here at Morris Meetings. So we make sure we're getting the best creative ideas for our clients and people there that live it and breathe it every single day um, to take care of our, our very important clientele. Wow, that is really incredible. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I surely would never have thought of that on my own. Me either. But what an unbelievable experience. Like you would do a corporate event like that and you'd never forget it ever. Never. Right. never. Wow. That is thank amazing. Thank you for sharing. No, thanks for asking me. You can tell I get excited talking about it. <laughs> I'm sure we could go on like this for a long time. So I have a feeling we're going to have to have you back once we start really well, moving, moving around. I would love that. <laughs> Keep me on your list. Yes, we will. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. <laughs> 